it's now we're at the point, this is fantastic, we, we know how to differentiate polynomials, but polynomials are only one type of function. So part of this first term is how do we perform calculus on the other functions? So it can be really useful and we can use it for all sorts of uh, practical problems. So to differentiate exponentials, you may recall then that the exponential function, the x will be in the power now, unlike the polynomial where the x is the base. So we differentiate the power, that simply goes out the front, but unlike polynomials where we take one off the power, we leave the power line, it stays the same. So it'd be f dash x times e to the function x. That is if it is uh, base e. If it's some other base, it's pretty much the same. So if it's a to the power of function x, the only difference is we also multiply by the, uh, the logarithm of a, and that's the natural logarithm of a, so base e. So there's the world's easiest derivative. Differentiate e to the x, and you get e to the x. Just differentiate x, of course you get one, one goes out the front. So what that basically means when we're talking about a graph is that uh, the slope of the graph is always equivalent to whatever the y value is. And that explains why the curve gets steeper and steeper as we go along, uh, because the curves, the slope's increasing, but the y is increasing as well, and so it shoots up really quick. e to the 5x then will become 5e to the 5x, differentiate 5x. Uh, 4x plus 3, 4e to the 4x plus 3. So this was uh, rather quick. You don't have to have a linear function in the power. We could have a quadratic there. So e to the x squared plus 3x plus 2 becomes 2x plus 3 times e to the x squared plus 3x plus 2. Ah, going to have to use a product rule here now because I've got a function of x, 3x squared, times another function of x, e to the 4x. So write down the first, 3x squared. Diff the second, 4e to the 4x. Plus write down the second, e to the 4x. Diff the first, 6x, we've got some common factors in there. Uh, what have we got? 6 is in both, x is in both, e to the 4x is in both as well. So eventually there it is, 6x, e to the 4x, outside of 2x plus 1. I guess it depends what you're going to do with the derivative as to whether you factorise it or not. I mean, most of the time we, we're going to find things like stationary points, which means solving when it equals 0, so a factorised form becomes useful. Um, Otherwise, if you're not using it for that, I suppose you could just leave it as 12x squared, etc., etc. Uh, got to use our chain rule, anarchy. Bring down the power, lower the power, diff the inside, and let's tidy that one up, 21e to the 3x. So all the rules are still there. Quotient rule, square the bottom, write down the bottom, diff the top, minus, write down the top, diff the bottom. Be very, very careful. It's so easy to make a silly mistake. e to the power of x times e to the power of x is, of course, e to the 2x. I was waiting to hear if I heard any e to the x squareds there. All right, we add the powers. Uh, and in this case, the e to the 2x cancel, and we have 3 e to the power of x on e to the power of x plus 3, all squared. All right, so we want to find the equation of a tangent. That was one of the first type of problems we use calculus for. Uh, what a, a tangent is a line. If it's a line, I need two things. I need a point. I need a slope. I've got a point. Let's find the slope. Oh, hang on. I can't use my slope formula. And this is where calculus came in handy. So let's find the derivative because that's the formula that allows us to find the slope of the gradient. Hence why it's sometimes called the gradient function. Um, but we want when x equals 1. And so it'll be 2e squared is the slope. So y minus y1 is equal to the slope, 2e squared, x minus x1, so minus 1. Tidying all that up, I've put it in general form. So 2e squared x minus y minus e squared plus 1 equals 0. All right, here's one of those ones where the, the base is uh, not e. And what we said was, no, we're going to do it exactly the same but we'll also multiply by the natural log of 4. And you'll notice I've used parentheses there. Um, I think that's important because otherwise it might look like I'm saying log of 44x. Or if I put it first, it might look like I'm saying log of 42x. Or, so I'll just use grouping symbols to make it clear the things that I'm, I'm multiplying together there.
Ooh, hang on, we haven't talked about differentiating log yet. Y equals log X. But if you recall, logs and exponentials are the inverse of each other. So if I make X the subject of this, I can turn it into an exponential equation instead of a log equation. And so we'd have X equals E to the power of Y. Now that we know how to differentiate. So I'll find dx to y instead of dy dx. So dx to y is e to the power of y. Well, if I turn both sides upside down, I now have my dy dx. It's just that my derivative is in terms of y instead of in terms of x. Well, that's okay. It just means I substitute the y value instead of the x value. But some people like to see it in terms of x because it does say dx with respect to x. But look at the second line e to the power of y is equal to x. So I can simply substitute in, and there's my answer, 1 over x. I get it straight away. All right. Look, it's just a couple of questions. I don't know what you're going on about. Just a handful there to do. 